Welcome to Learn Create Sew. For today's tutorial, we're going to work on gift bags. I'm going to show you how to make this cute little flat gift bag or a similar bag that has boxed corners. And this bag is able to stand up. The process for both bags is very similar. It's a quick, fun project, and it's a great way to use scrap fabric, and it's handy for the holidays. For this project, you're going to want two rectangles of fabric. I'm using cotton fabric for my bag. You're also going to want some ribbon. This is one quarter inch wide ribbon. And you're also going to want a safety pin and a fabric marking tool, as well as an iron. I'm using a wet erase marker for my bag today, but if you don't have that, a regular pencil will work just fine as long as your fabric's light enough. If regular pencil doesn't show up on your fabric, chalk is a good choice as well. I also like to use a bit of fray check to make sure that my ribbon doesn't fray. You want to start by cutting out the two rectangles of fabric. The size of the rectangle can vary depending on how large you'd like your bag to be. For this medium sized bag, my rectangles are nine inches wide and 12 and a quarter inches tall. There's a worksheet available on my website which can help you decide how large to cut the rectangles for your bag. Let's go ahead and get started. First, lay your two rectangles right side down and identify the top edge of each rectangle. On my fabric, it doesn't really matter. The mittens can go any direction, but I'm gonna let this edge and this edge be the top. I'm gonna begin by marking one and a half inches down from the top edge. So I'm gonna take my grid ruler and set it along the top edge and mark one and a half inches down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So that you can see my line a little better, I'm going to go over it again in Sharpie. I don't recommend this for your actual project. I'm just doing this so that you can see it on camera. Next, I'm going to draw a second line two and a quarter inches below that. This line will be a total of three and three fourths inch from the top edge. And again, I'm going to draw the line on both rectangles. Next, I'm going to take just one of the rectangles. Doesn't really matter which one. And I'm going to make myself a guide for where my drawstring channel is going to be. If you identify the bottom line that we drew, we're gonna make a mark that is one eighth of an inch above that. Then I'm gonna make another mark that is five eighths of an inch above that. This creates a space in between the two lines that is a half an inch long. That space, I'm going to leave open for my drawstring channel. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go to the other side, I'm going to identify the bottom line, make a mark one eighth of an inch above your line, five eighths of an inch above your line, and the space in between is where we're going to leave open for our drawstring channel. So now when you look at the top edge of your bag, you see our first line, our second line, and the guide marks for our drawstring channel. Our bag pieces are ready and now let's head to the ironing board. To start, take one of your rectangles and find the top edge. The top edge is the one with the line closest to it. 
fold the top edge to touch your first line and press. Then take what you've already folded and fold it over again to touch the second line. Repeat this process for the other rectangle. Your two rectangles should now look like this with the edges pressed flat. Now we're going to sew the two pieces together. First, open up your folds. I know this seems strange because we just pressed them flat. That will help us later, but when we actually sew them, we want them to be opened up. Place the two pieces right sides together so that the rectangle that has your marks for the channel is on the top. So I'm going to place one piece right side up, the other right side down on top of it. And I want to make sure that I'm looking at the rectangle that has the marks for my drawstring. You want to make sure that your folds line up, so make sure that that top edge matches nicely. Pin in place as needed. Now I'm ready to sew the bag together. I'm going to start sewing at the top edge and sew around the three sides, side, bottom, and side, leaving the top edge open. However, I'm going to leave a gap at my mark. So where I drew my mark for my drawstring channel, I'm not going to sew. I'm going to start at the top edge and backstitch. And then I'm going to come down to my mark, stop, and backstitch. And then I'm going to skip this section. I'm going to start sewing again and backstitch and then keep going. So where I have this mark here, I'm going to leave that open. But I want to make sure that I backstitch on either side to make it strong. So let's head to the sewing machine. Now that we've sewn the sides of the bag, the next step is to press open the seams. We want the side seams of the bag to be open. If you have a sleeve ironing board or a seam roll or pressing ham, that works great for this step. Simply slide the seam roll inside the bag and press it open. I like to just use the tip of my iron. I don't want to get rid of the pressing marks I already made. I just want this edge to lie flat. So I'm just going to press just the tip along that side edge. You can also, if you like, press the bottom of the bag. For smaller bags that aren't large enough to accommodate a pressing ham or seam roll, you can finger press. Simply place your hand inside the bag and rub the seam open. The heat from your hands and fingers will help it to lay flatter. Now that the sides have been pressed open, I'm ready to turn down the drawstring channel. You want to make sure that this side seam stays open and then fold over the fabric to meet your first pressing line. We're simply refolding what we already had. And again, you have to make sure that these seams stay open. They're going to want to roll closed, but make sure it stays open. 
then fold again to your second pressing line. And we're ready to sew. If it feels like the casing is rolling and is not staying in place, you can use a couple pins to keep it in position. The first way I'm going to show you to sew this in place is to use the free arm on your sewing machine. This is when you remove the front compartment and slide the fabric over the edge. If the bag is too small for the free arm on your machine, I'll also show you another way. When that's the case, I like to flip the bag so that it's right side out. And then I'll sew on this section by moving the rest out of the way. If your sewing machine does have a removable front compartment, making this arm of the sewing machine narrow, you can also sew this section by sliding the arm of the sewing machine into the opening of the bag. Then you'll stitch an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch away from the interior folded edge. Then, to create the drawstring channel, you're going to do a second row of stitches a half an inch away from the first. So here's my first row of stitches. I'm going to do a second row one half inch away from that. And you can use a marking tool to mark that placement if you need to. If your sewing machine does not have a removable compartment like mine, you can sew this by turning the bag right side out and then moving the excess fabric out of the way. I'm going to start on the side seam and I'm going to be stitching 1 8th of an inch to 1 16th of an inch away from my fold. You can see right here is my casing and I'm going to be stitching close to the interior fold. As I'm sewing, I'm going to make sure that this folded edge stays aligned with the line that I drew previously. Since this bag is so small, I'm going to have to start and stop frequently. I'm going to make sure that the fabric right in front is laying nice and flat. And after sewing for a little bit, I'm going to stop and rearrange it. For the next step, we're going to sew an additional row of stitching. We're going to stitch one half inch away from our previous stitches. This will create a channel for the drawstring or the ribbon. If you need to, you can use a marking tool to mark half an inch away.
Once you've sewn the casing, go ahead and press one last time. Next, you have to decide if you want your gift bag to be flat or to be able to stand up with boxed corners. For this little bag, I want it to be flat. So I'm gonna turn it wrong side out. And I'm gonna trim the corners. Be careful not to cut your stitches. I like to keep my clipped corners about an eighth of an inch away from my stitches. If you would like to, you can also use pinking shears to finish the edges. And now I'll turn my bag right side out. And I'm gonna use my purple thing to poke out the corners. And I'm done sewing this bag. If you'd like the bag to be able to stand up, now's the time to box the corners. For this medium sized bag, I'm gonna draw myself a guide that is one and a half inches square. So from the bottom to the side, I'm gonna make a square in the corner that's one and a half inches tall and one and a half inches wide. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite corner. For the smaller size bag, the guides for my corners would only be one inch square. And you can alter this depending on how deep you'd like the bottom of your bag to be. Next, I'm gonna cut out the squares. and your bag will now look like this. The two bottom corners are missing. To sew the boxed corners, pinch the bag on the front and the back and pull them apart. As you do this, find the bottom and side seams of the bag. Match up the two seams. and align the cut edges. Make sure the bottom seam and the side seam are open and are matching in the center. When you pinch this, the end will kind of look like a triangle with the tip cut off. Now I'm gonna pin this in place, making sure to keep those seams open. So I've got one corner pinned and now I'm going to go to the other side, grab the front and back of the bag and pull them apart. Line up the bottom seam and the side seam. Make sure the seams are open and that the raw edges are touching. And pin in place. And we're gonna sew along this edge with a half an inch seam allowance. And we're gonna do so on both sides here and here. And you can kind of see how our bag is already able to stand up. Let's head to the sewing machine. The corners have been sewn together, and this is a good time to check to make sure everything looks okay. So if you want to, go ahead and turn your bag right side out and check to make sure it looks nice. And if you like, you can trim your seam allowances.
I'm now ready to thread the drawstring. I like to cut the ribbon for the drawstring three times the cut width. When I cut the fabric for this bag, it was nine inches wide. So multiply that by three gives me 27. So I want two pieces of ribbon that are each 27 inches long. For my smaller bag, which was only six inches wide when I cut the fabric, the ribbon was only 18 inches long because six times three is 18. When you cut your ribbon, you want to be careful to make sure that it doesn't fray. A few things that you can do to help prevent fraying is to cut the tip of the ribbon at a diagonal. I'm using Fray Check today. I'm just gonna put a little on the very end and let it dry to help prevent fraying. And I'm gonna do that on all four ends, the two on each ribbon. And this step is optional. I just think it looks a bit nicer when the ribbon isn't frayed. Now I'm gonna take one of my pieces of ribbon and I'm gonna string it through the drawstring channel. When you do this, you're gonna go all the way to one side, past that opening, through the back, and all the way back to where you started. So it's like your ribbon is going to be folded and both of the tails are gonna end up on the same side of the bag. We left an opening when we did our side seams and that opening should be in the same position as your stitch lines. So go in between your two stitch lines and insert the safety pin. Bunch the fabric over the safety pin and pull it through. I've reached the second side seam, but I want to go past it. So you can see my safety pin there. I'm going all the way past that seam and going back around to the one that I was already using. And I'm back to the opening. And I'll slide my safety pin out. And if your ribbon gets a little damaged from the safety pin, you can go ahead and just trim it off again. I'm not gonna worry about it on mine. You can see I have both ends of my ribbon here. I wanna make sure that my bag is fully open and laying flat. And now I'm gonna tie the two ends of the ribbon together. I'm simply gonna take both pieces of ribbon, make a loop, and pull it through. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna take my second piece of ribbon, use my safety pin, and slide it through the other opening. So this one I've already used, I'm gonna to go to the other side and slide it through. I'm gonna go all the way around until it comes back from the same spot. You might have to move the other ribbon out of the way slightly. And go back out from where you started and pull the ribbon through. Line up the two edges. Make sure the bag is totally open. And then tie your knot. When you pull the ribbon, your bag closes. And we finished our gift bag. It has a standing base and is a great size for small gifts. And again, you can adjust this size to be as large or as small as you want. And repeat this process for the flat bag.
I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Happy sewing and we hope to see you again at Learn Create Sew.